Hi and welcome to another episode of Essential Lightroom. In this week's video I'm going to show you how to recreate this effect which I've nicknamed the Cinema Blues. I'm going to take you through step by step how to create the effect and then we're going to take it one step further where I'll show you how you can deal with certain other parts of the image to work alongside the free preset. The link is in the description below so you can grab that. So I'm going to take you through the entire edit and like I say there's a free preset you can download and use the basis of your image editing. So this is the image we started off with and as you can see it's already quite an interesting image but we're going to go through and make it much better. So as always I'm going to go through all of the different options on the right hand side in the develop module one at a time and take you through what we do, why we do it. And like I say then after that we're going to take it one step further so we can work on this specific image to get a result close to the one I just demonstrated in the opening of this video. So let's start off by going to the basics panel. And we're just going to come down and we're going to leave most of the options at the top to start off with empty. We're going to leave all those. We're going to come down to the highlights and we're going to drop those down right the way down. As you can see, we're already pretty blown out in the background, but this is just going to give us a little bit more tonal away and sort of information we can work with. So let's just drop that down, take it down to about minus 75. That'll make sure we keep some of that detail in there. And when we start to adjust the tone curve, we'll put back in some of the contrast that we've now lost by reducing the highlights so far down. Next up, we're going to take the shadows and we're going to open those out. So we're going to push that up to about 25, 27, somewhere around there, just to make sure we don't lose all the detail when we start to get that higher contrast. And next up, we're going to go to the whites and we're going to do the same on there. We're going to take those and we're going to drop those down by about minus 15. So we're protecting our highlights, making sure we end up with a slightly flat image. And like I say, the next thing is we'll go through and we'll set some more clarity in there and so on to put some of that back, that tonal information. So let's come down to the clarity option. And let's take that up, bump that up to about plus 30, 35, just to get that sort of pseudo HDR effect in there, which works great with images like this, where you can see it helps to start pull out the detail in the cobblestone floor put the detail in the black leather, especially in the hair, and put some of that contrast back in while still keeping that matte effect. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the vibrance and we're going to give that a little push. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the warmer colors in the image, the skin tones, the red and the yellows and so on. We're going to give those a little bit of a boost by using the vibrance control. So we're going to take those up to about plus 18 to 20, somewhere around that kind of figure. That puts some warmth back into the skin tones. And then we're going to desaturate the other tones. So let's just take that down to about minus 30, just to give us that sort of desaturated look. So you can see we've desaturated most of the image, but we've still got the nice colors in the reds, the skin tones, the hair, they're all still there. And we'll look at how we can adjust those later on. But next up, we're going to leave the tone curve for a moment. We're going to jump down to split toning so we can set the colors that we want in this image. Now, a classic way of when working with any kind of movies is to warm the highlights up and cool the shadows down. And then we can adjust the balance or the relationship between those two different colors uh, by using the balance slider. So to start off with, let's put some warmth into those highlights. So we're going to take those up into the orangey browns, probably somewhere in the region of around about around the 60, 65 mark to get that sort of nice warm tone. And we'll take the saturation and we'll boost that up to about plus 15 to 20. Don't want to go crazy with it. You can see that starts to put some warmth into the image. Uh, the next thing we're going to do then is we're going to come down to the shadows and we're going to start to open those up. So we're going to take the hues up to around about uh, around the 220, 230 mark to get us into those sort of those sort of blues, those blue kind of colors we want, the sort of tealy kind of blues. So let's go to about there. And then we're going to do is going to take the saturation and we're going to boost this up as well. So we're going to take that to about 30 and you can see as soon as we start boosting that up we start to get that overall blue tone to the image so you can see that now cools the overall image down so let's take the balance and let's boost that over to the right hand side that's no, it to the left hand side i should say let's bring back some of that warmth oh minus 25 should do the job so there's our image so if we just turn that on and off there's the before there's the after so we've got a nice cool looking image so next up Let's go over to the tone curve. So once we're in the tone curve, we need to make sure we're in the point curve mode. As always, make sure you check the little box in the right hand corner to switch between the two different modes. And now we're going to add a couple of points to the image because we're going to create a normal S curve. So we're going to add 
probably about five or six new points in there so we can control the S curve. You can always add more points should you need them. And what we're going to do is we're going to start taking down the shadows to give them more contrast. So you can see once we start doing that, the contrast in the hair, in the leather, all start to get a lot punchier. And then we're going to take the highlights and we're going to start to boost those up a little bit. So getting that S curve in there. We don't want to go crazy with this. And we're going to take the highlights and we're going to drop those down a little bit so we sort of crush the whites ever so slightly. Adjust this until you get the kind of effect that you're happy with. We'll leave the center point roughly where it is. We're looking for an S curve, so that's looking pretty good. I'm kind of liking where that's going. So you can see that's really given that quite a high sense of contrast. We retained the detail in the faces and the most important characters in the photograph while really blowing out the background. So the next thing I want to do is I want to give this a more cinematic look. So I can do that quite easily just by coming up to the crop tool. And you can see we have the option then to change the aspect ratio where it says original. We can click and we've got a range of different aspect ratios we can use in there. Alternatively, we can create a custom one should we need to. But I'm going to go by for 16 by 9, which is a sort of traditional sort of movie format as you're going to see. Position that where I want it. So that's looking good. And we'll click on done on there so that's given us our cinematic look so you can see we've already got quite a nice looking image and we could leave it there if we wanted to and uh, in the preset that's pretty much where we are but i'm going to take you through now a few extra steps just to make this image a little bit better just to work with this specific photograph so we can make sure that we don't have distractions in there that pull away for the most important characters so the first thing I want to do for this image is remove some of the distractions we have in the background. This red vehicle really kind of draws your eye away from the main characters. So we can do that easily. Come up to the adjustment brush. And what I'm going to do is make sure that I've got it set to saturation. So you can see from the effect, I can choose saturation. And once I've got that, I can choose the amount of desaturation or increased saturation that I want to work with. So at the moment, I'm desaturating. So I'm going to pull that right the way down. I don't want to take the entire color out, but I want to get it close to black and white. So let's just increase the size of our brush. And you can see that I'm not using the auto mask at this point in time. So I'm just going to paint over the vehicle, over the red. And you can see that starts to desaturate it. So we can use this now to control all that. I can do the same with the vehicle behind. And now we're starting to get close to the hay and close to the edge of this other vehicle. We'll just switch the auto mask on. And now I'm just making sure that I keep the little plus inside the crosshairs. You can see that we're now making sure that we don't take out any of the tone in the hay and so on. So you can see I can easily adjust this and take any of the distractions in the background out, like these indicator, the orange indicators. So we can adjust all that exactly where I want it to be and then I can adjust the saturation I can take that right the way down I can put it back up just to put a little bit of color in there I'm gonna go crazy with it and I could do the same then over on the right hand side where we've got this building so I can just come over to that and paint my desaturation onto this and you can see that now removes a lot of that distraction from the background we'll do the same with a little bit of red on the right hand side again just to take that out so anything that's sort of drawing a distraction, I'm just desaturating that so it plays less of a part. And the next thing I want to do once we've done that is click on done. And now I want to put a bit more color into their faces and pull back some of that color we've lost when we desaturated everything. So I can do that by coming to the HSL section. And in here, I can adjust the hue, saturation, and luminance. So with the saturation, what I can do is I know that the tones I'm working with there are going to be the sort of orange tones and the red tones and so on. So if I start to adjust the orange, for example, we can see we start to get more color into the faces, into the hair. The same with the reds. You can see I can adjust that. We A, B that. You can see it's subtle, but it just pulls a little bit of that warmth back into their skin tones, which is quite nice. So we can do that. Once we're happy with that effect, I could leave it at this point if I wanted to, but one final thing I want to do, and that's come down to the effects section, and I'm going to create a post-crop vignette just to pull our attention into our focus into this main sort of section in the middle where our characters are. So we're going to drop that down just to pull our focus in. Now you may find when you make adjustments like this, you need to go in and tweak your tone curve, or you need to come back in and tweak the uh, sort of your, your basic alterations, your highlights and so on. So you can adjust that should you need to, to make sure you get the exact effect that you want. And there we go. That's the sort of final edit that I'd work with. So let's take a look at before and after. 
So this is where we started and this is where we've ended up. So you can see it has a real sense of cinematic depth. We've got those lovely cool tones. We've got the warmer tones and the highlights and everything sort of draws your attention into the main characters in the center of the image. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please hit that subscribe button to be kept updated with all the new content we add every single week. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you've got any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else covered on the channel, pop those in the comment section below. And as always, the free preset is available on EssentialLightroom.com. We can go and grab it, download it, and then you've got a good starting point to work with creating this kind of effect. Well, until next time, take care.